Welcome to News Today with WW News Today. I'm Tom Corliss. Yes, I'm still alive. And here now the news for February 26, 2020. The Walt Disney Company has named Bob Chapek its seventh chief executive officer effective immediately. The current chief, Bob Iger, will assume the role of executive chairman and direct the company's creative endeavors while leading the board and providing the full benefit of his experience, leadership and guidance to ensure a smooth and successful transition through the end of his contract on December 31st, 2021. In Mr. Chapek's new role as CEO, he will directly oversee all of the company's business segments and corporate functions. Chapek will also report to the executive chairman, Mr. Iger, and the board of directors. He will be appointed to the board at a later date. A new head of Disney Parks Experiences and Products will be named at a future time. Quote, with the successful launch of Disney's direct-to-consumer business and the integration of 21st Century Fox well underway, I believe this is the optimal time to transition to a new CEO, said Bob Iger. Susan Arnold, independent lead director of the Disney board, said, quote, the board has been actively engaged in succession planning for the past several years, and after consideration of internal and external candidates, we unanimously elected Bob Chapek as the next CEO of the Walt Disney Company. Mr. Chapek has shown outstanding leadership and a proven ability to deliver strong results across a wide array of businesses, and his tremendous outstanding uh, excuse me, tremendous understanding of the breadth and depth of the company and appreciation for the special connection between Disney and its consumers makes him the perfect choice for the next CEO. In order to address questions investors might have had during the sudden announcement, the company held a conference call for lead investors. Iger explained the decision to make the transition now. Quote, the company's gotten larger and more complex just in recent 12 months. I felt that with the asset base in place and with our strategy essentially deployed, that I should be spending as much time as possible on basically the creative side of our businesses because with the asset base in place and the strategy in place, that becomes the biggest priority. And speaking about what I want to accomplish before I leave the company in 21, getting things right creatively would be my number one goal. I couldn't do that if I ran the company on a day-to-day -day basis. It just takes that much time and is so complex. So the goal was for me to turn over the day-to-day -day management of the company to Bob with direct authority over all of our businesses and basically all elements of the company and free me up to just basically focus on the creative side. JPEG discussed his managing strategy, quote, in terms of your question about the businesses that I've not managed, Bob has been great in terms of giving me exposure across many segments of the company. I've had probably a fairly broad overview of how the company operates, regardless of the different industries that we work in. That said, obviously I've not spent as much time in the media side or the direct-to-consumer side, but we have some really great experienced leaders that are in place in those businesses, and the way that Bob essentially manages this uh, direct team is we have a lot of cross-fertilization. We meet every single week and discuss each other's businesses. And so while I certainly have an opportunity to immerse myself more inside those media businesses, I have a bit of fluency, just like my peers have some fluency in our business. I'm familiar with the opportunity and some of the challenges that they all face. Um, needless to say, since yesterday, a lot of people have asked my opinion on this change. I obviously am not a fan. Um, I think Mr. Chapek has done a horrendous job with parks and resorts. Regardless of numbers, I mean, things were certainly in place that were going to put those numbers where they were anyway. Um, great investments in Animal Kingdom like Pandora, which was a Tom Staggs decision. Um, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge was already in development before Chapek took the job. If anything, the project suffered because they didn't open with Rise of the Resistance. They decided not to wait and open the land early. Disneyland had a catastrophic couple of months, which ended up with Catherine Powell being fired, who ended up as the scapegoat for everything. Um, Toy Story Land, obviously, I, I feel has been a tremendous bust. There's been a lot of decisions along those lines um, under the Chapek administration I have not agreed with, and certainly smaller things like beginning to charge for parking at resorts, um, the, the giant price increases, all sorts of things in, in those realms. Um, I don't, he never understood the line of business. From my understanding from people he worked with, he never tried to learn from them. He always seemed to think he knew better than other people. Um, in the end, do I think this is worse than him being in charge of parks and resorts? Possibly not. I mean, as he said in his statement, he's, uh, he's gonna have a lot on his plate and he necessarily won't be making those, uh, I guess they'd now be more minor decisions in relations to parks and resorts. 
Um, someone else will be given parks, resorts, and, and uh, parks and consumer products, whatever it's called now, parks experiences and consumer products. Someone else will be given that job and will have a more direct effect on what happens to the parks in the next couple of years now. Um, so, I mean, it might be better for the parks that he's moved up, um, but I, uh, him as CEO, I think, is incredibly dangerous. The Walt Disney Company is founded on creativity and businessmen that come from consumer products often do not understand the creative side of the company and are often unwilling to let the creative side do what it has to do and really manage everything from a money standpoint. Um, not understanding how unique the Walt Disney Company is, how special it is, how different it is from any other, um, and how you can't really base what you know other companies do. That can't be used to drive the future of this organization. But that's all I have to say on it for now. That's my opinion. People have asked, but um, that's what I think. I'm not a fan. I'm never going to be a fan. Um, but hopefully, my, my hope is whoever ends up in charge of parks and experiences is uh, more able to maybe hopefully someone that comes from that division, number one, uh, promoted from within, and number two, allows the creative people to do what they need to do um, and, and understands that, that money will come. If you let them do what they can really do, then the money will follow. We have a new set of rose gold ears at Disney Parks. These ears differ from those previously released uh, with a non sequin bow with a much more vibrant sheen, uh, vibrant sheen on the ears themselves. Another major difference is the addition of a frame around the ears. Uh, this rose gold frame gives the ears a more slender look. We found these ears inside the Emporium of the Magic Kingdom, and they sell for $29.99. Being displayed in the Briar Rose display, we assume that these new ears have replaced the Briar Rose ears that were available previously. A new Steamboat Willie Minnie Mouse balloon souvenir popcorn bucket has arrived at Walt Disney World. Inspired by the beloved 1928 cartoon short Steamboat Willie, the bucket is similar to the Mickey-shaped balloons uh, that are popular at the park, except it's grayscale in coloring like the animated, uh, the animated cartoon. It's topped uh, by Minnie's classic sailor hat and flower. The bottom even features a frilly skirt design. The strap has a film strip reel with Minnie in various animated poses, and on the sides are mouse glove shaped plastic tabs that snap on. Uh, the new bucket is available at the Magic Kingdom at the refreshment stand to the right of Cinderella Castle by the Hub. Retails for only $16. It's a pretty good deal. You can also get popcorn refills with this bucket and an additional cost. We actually have it right here. Here it is. It's very cute. Um, I wish they do other shaped buckets, but, you know, they're really going to try to get the most out of this one shape they've made, and so we're just going to keep adding stuff onto it. That being said, it's a, it's a cute pair um, with the Mickey. The one thing I will say, they're not made great. They scratch real easy. Um, so if you get one, make sure you wrap it. Maybe don't wear it around if you're worried about it getting scuffed. See, this one was wrapped, and it's still got a mark on it. But Keep that in mind if you're looking to grab one. The 2020 Epcot International Flower and Garden Festival will blossom on March 4th. Exclusive festival merchandise will be available at Epcot for guests to purchase, including collections featuring the Orange Bird, Minnie, Mickey, and Spike the Bee. The Orange Bird's Hello Sunshine includes a pair of ears, spirit jersey, lounge fly backpack, and drink wear. I love the picture. Really love the 70s look of the picture. The Minnie's Flower Cart Collection includes a flower crown, multiple apparel pieces, and Dooney and Burke wristlet, crossbody, and tote. Mickey's Farmer's Market Collection includes merchandise inspired by your local farmer's market, including apparel, accessories, and drinkware. And Spike's Sweet Collection, uh, or Sweet As Can Be Collection, is buzzing with apparel, drinkware, and accessories. And while you're snacking around World Showcase, be sure to pick up a souvenir Spike the Bee Spork, available for purchase at select outdoor kitchens while supplies last. As well, a Disney Parks Wishables collection inspired by the festival will be available on March 4th, offering an open chase edition of Mickey Mouse with Minnie Mouse, the Frushi, Figment Topiary, and a Butterfly Topiary in the blind bags. These are great. Love these. In anticipation of the opening of Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, Remy is getting the topiary treatment for the festival. This new Remy topiary is the centerpiece of a new Ratatouille garden in the France Pavilion. This garden is planted with veggies that would traditionally be used to make ratatouille. Remy holds a large wooden spoon while standing atop a large wheel of cheese, or fromage, if you will. Of course, the little chef also wears his little chef's hat. The longest-running Epcot Festival is known for its themed topiaries. Guests will also find returning favorites such as Snow White, Elsa and Anna, 
Belle and the Beast, Mickey, Minnie, Miss Piggy, and Kermit. The team at Walt Disney Imagineering will officially begin implementing their new vision of Spaceship Earth when it, uh, the attraction closes on May 25th and their work begins on May 26th. We first announced the closure, if you can believe it, way back in October 2018 and expect the closure to last two to two and a half years as part of the park's major overhaul. Uh, of course, there will be a new name for the attraction as well, Spaceship Earth, our shared story. As we previously reported, the ride inside of Spaceship Earth will also see a refreshing in all the scenes leading up to the Industrial Revolution, where the newspapers are being printed. Uh, we'll uh, see some changes on, a, changes on a greater scale will happen following that all the way to the end of the ride. Uh, yesterday's announcement comes paired with a new piece of concept art, which shows a heavily altered Egyptian scene from the attraction. Uh, the full announcement reads, quote, this means Spaceship Earth in its current form will close for a time starting on May 26th, and the ideas we are working on inside that geosphere will be well worth the wait. As we shared at last year's D23 Expo, the next iteration of Spaceship Earth will focus on the story of humanity following our long journey from prehistoric humans to today, brought to life with magic and depth that only Disney can deliver. Many of the moments you know and love will be updated in amazing ways, blended with brand new scenes to tell a story about our human experience. Today, we're excited to share a few additional details of what you can expect when this icon returns. You'll visit Egypt, which is part of the current version of the attraction, but it'll be in Egypt like you've never seen before, transformed through the power of light. Throughout the attraction, you'll hear a new narration and see how light plays a central role in our shared human journey, coming to life in dynamic ways in a celebration of the magic that's possible when we all come together. Walt Disney once said Epcot would always be in a state of becoming, and Spaceship Earth has lived up to that vision for generations. This will be the attraction's fourth and most ambitious update since the park's opening on October 1st, 1982. Like any Epcot fan, I am scared. Well, I was going to say something that I can't say on this show. I'm very scared, let's put it that way. Um, I don't like this art. Um, I don't like the reliance on a lot of heavy projection and lighting. Um, a lot of the scenes are very understated, which I think works. Um, and this is just, there's light in the columns and there's some projection effect above the doorway and there's just a lot going on. It's very busy. Um, I'm concerned. I mean, Spaceship Earth has uh, began as a ride about communication. It then became about innovating and making new, uh, new advances and new technologies as we trek towards tomorrow. Both of those are very Epcot things. I don't know if the importance of light and storytelling it, it could work but i'm i'm nervous let's just put it that way i'm very nervous so if you're nervous like me you have until may 26 to experience spaceship earth as it exists now A warning though it's in rough shape so but uh, better to see it before it leaves than not at all right the Mickey Shorts Theater opens March 4th alongside Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway at Hollywood Studios, and final touches have been added to the theater. Just outside, the old poster sign was recently painted over with uh, Mickey colors now. And along the exterior, a new Mickey Shorts Theater marquee lines the overhang, and a second vacation fun sign is on the uh, two vacation fun signs are located up there as well. That's the original short you'll be able to watch in there. Imagineers and managers were on the site uh, recently inspecting the latest sign installation for the theater, which is located, of course, adjacent to a frozen sing-along celebration. The Vacation Fun sign matches the concept art that was released earlier this week, albeit with a fun old-timey Art Deco twist. With so many guests rope-dropping Star Wars Galaxy's Edge at Hollywood Studios, there's a dire need for more breakfast options in the park, and trusty old milk stand is stepping up its game to offer more items for hungry, hungry travelers to Batu starting on March 1st. Of course, you'll be able to order the classic green and blue milks. Yeah, they're classic. <laughs> oh, those classic milks. As well as the Bubblewamba Family Farms Light Up Souvenir Sipper that's usually sold here. Uh, plus, new breakfast items like a green milk bread pudding, uh, Saka Farms Egg Bite, and a Wamba Yogurt Cup. Those are coming March 1st. I'm pretty excited about the bread pudding. I'm very intrigued. The usual procedure for securing a Rise of the Resistance boarding group requires that all members of the booking party not only be at Hollywood Studios, but also tapped into the park. While the boarding group process has gotten increasingly frustrating over the past few weeks due to the changing park hours and ever-increasing demand for the attraction, a glitch this morning in the My Disney Experience app caused even greater issues. Readers contacted us about a new glitch uh, that allowed guests who were not in the park even thousands of miles away to secure a boarding group. It's 
bad. Various Twitter users also took to social media to express their concern over the glitch since they didn't get a boarding group. With, get, with guests able to obtain boarding groups from miles away, they're taking opportunities from families who likely rope dropped and were in the park already. Hopefully this glitch, this glitch will be adjusted by tomorrow and obtaining a boarding group will go back to the way it was. Not that that's great either, but obviously you don't want people thousands of miles away who aren't going to ride the ride to steal a boarding group. The opening of Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser is drawing near, and a recent job posting by Disney shows they're now hiring for this immersive hotel experience. Galactic Star Cruiser General Manager is the name of the job listing, and if the job listing is any indication, Disney is taking the immersive theme of the hotel very seriously. According to the listing, the general manager will be called Admiral, and the Star Wars story in the hotel will include encounters between resistance forces and the First Order. Galactic Star Cruiser will be a two-night adventure, think a la Disney Cruise Line, uh, and will be a non-traditional hotel experience. Reservations will open later this year for the Star Cruiser, which is set to debut in 2021 at Walt Disney World. With all the recent concern about coronavirus outbreak and its spread to other countries outside of China, many countries like Italy are placing travel restrictions due to isolated outbreaks. A group of cast members who work at Walt Disney World have been asked to stay home after a trip to Italy. According to West 2 News, a Walt Disney World spokesperson confirmed that a small number of individuals who work at Disney have been asked to stay home due to coronavirus concerns. The spokesperson said there are no confirmed or suspected cases of coronavirus at Disney and no one who was on the trip to Italy has shown any symptoms of the virus. Disney said the decision to keep the workers at home was made from an abundance of caution. The exact number of workers involved was not immediately available and at this time there are no confirmed or su suspected cases of coronavirus at Walt Disney World. Whether you're a veteran, vegan, or an omnivore looking for something different to eat while at the Disney parks, a recent vegan menu item expansion across Walt Disney World and Disneyland has helped everyone broaden their food horizons, even while at a theme park. While the parks have featured a number of meatless brands over the years, a new partnership will cement Impossible Foods as the preferred plant-based burger brand across the Disney parks and Disney Cruise Line. Impossible produces more than just burgers, and a variety of their products will be featured at festivals across both coasts of the Disney parks, like this Impossible Meatball Sub that will be offered at Paradise Garden Grill for the upcoming Disney California Adventure Food and Wine Festival. Other festival offerings include Impossible Lettuce Cups at Ballast Point Brewery and Impossible Cheeseburger Mac and Cheese. Currently, you can find the Impossible Burger served at Tony's Town Square Restaurant in the Magic Kingdom, plus a number of rotating other locations like City Works at Disney Springs and the Hollywood Brown Derby in Disney's Hollywood Studios. The Impossible Burger will also be available soon at Smoke Jumper's Grill at California Adventure, among other restaurants. New cards have been introduced that show off the stars of the games of Pixar Pier, including Heimlich from A Bug's Life for Heimlich's Candy Corn Toss. Bullseye from the Toy Story films appears on another card for the Bullseye Stallion Stampede. Wally and Eve soar through space on their card for the Wally Space Race. And finally, the boy from La Luna appears, surrounded by stars, on his card for the La Luna Star Catcher. These cards are randomly distributed, and you can't guarantee which card you'll receive when you purchase points to play from the machine. Each gameplay costs 500 points, or $5. You can purchase a reload a card at one of the kiosks on Pixar Pier. The kiosks accept both credit and debit cards. You can purchase 500, 1,000, 2,000, or 4,000 points at a time. As the coronavirus outbreak continues to evolve, the Oriental Land Company has released updated guidelines for preventing the spread uh, at Tokyo Disney Resort. Please use the hand sanitizer that is available in all park restrooms after washing your hands. If you begin to feel unwell while at the park, please contact the nearest cast member. If guests feeling unwell due to possible cold symptoms are requested to refrain from visiting the parks. While this may seem like common sense, it apparently seems to be something that requires saying in the first place. We can only hope that the situation improves from here, especially with the upcoming new Fantasyland expansion and the Tokyo 2020 Olympics just weeks away. Cast members continue to have permission to wear face masks if they choose. Uh, and Japan has the fourth most cases with 159 confirmed cases and one death at this point. We here at WWNT will continue to monitor how the outbreak affects Tokyo Disney Resort and the Disney parks worldwide. Of course, Hong Kong and Shanghai remain closed. For more information on these stories and more, head on over to WDWNT.com. If you're enjoying the show, be sure to like this video, subscribe to WDW News Today on YouTube for more great content, and click the bell for notifications. Make sure you hit select all notifications so you never miss an episode of this show or any others. For the worldwide leader in Disney Parks news, this is Tom Corliss saying enjoy the rest of your today and have a great big beautiful tomorrow.